Coming up on SCN Sports Talk, we are going to discuss the head coaching vacancies. Who, What job is the best available? What job maybe isn't the best available? We'll break that down for you. We're also going to discuss some college and NBA basketball. Um, who's the best right now? What's going on with Syracuse? We're going to break that down. We're also going to discuss the NFL Hall of Fame finalists that were just unveiled. Who should be first ballot? Who should get in? We're also going to discuss the college football national championship picks as well as our NFL picks for this Sunday. But before we do all that, we're going to introduce ourselves as we have a new uh, colleague here on SCN. You won't want to miss his introduction all that more is coming up on SCN Sports Talk, which kicks off right now. Hello guys, and welcome here to SCN Sports Talk. I apologize, I don't know why this is out in the open. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, so this is episode number one. Woo! Oh, we made it. It's excellent. I'm Brian. We finally got there. We finally <laughs> got there. We got Don't there. Talk. Boy, there's so many people to thank. Um, everybody, everybody, <laughs> our friends at thank Heartland Spirit. <laughs> I, I think more importantly, we got to thank our friends at Heartland Spirit for uh, their yes. podcast and them giving me this idea. <laughs> um, thank you guys over there. Um, check out their podcast, of course, the uh, Canteen Podcast, and then they have the Seal over there. Their uh, channel is linked to ours, so check it out. Um, but yeah, I'm Brian. You guys know me um, very damn well by now. <laughs> I would hope so. You were on in one of their episodes. It's not and, just that. Look at all the videos on this channel. <laughs> they know me pretty damn well. <laughs> and I'm also the loudmouth uh, Buffalo Bills fan. Uh, oh, Brian, uh, now, been oh. from 7 and 9 to 13 and 3 through the years. I Let's went see. through Drew Bledsoe to Josh Allen. <laughs> Jason yeah. Hunt, Rochester. <laughs> You've been crying. I'm a Chargers fan. We have nothing to go on. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, hey, man, just just you wait until you find out who. We... <laughs> we'll get in this discussion soon, but you know, we, oh, yeah. we'll definitely be discussing it. <laughs> oh man! So for those on the audio version, I'm Brian Hummel. Um, I own this channel. That's... <laughs> That's a, I'm the real Conor McGregor. I own this city. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, it's like I'm the real Brian Hummel. I own this city. No. <laughs> no, don't confuse him like that. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm Brian. Um, for those who don't know, I studied sport management in school. I have a degree in sport management in communications. Granted, I'm not very good at communications. And we are currently on delay because of COVID. So, but I figured sports are a big interest for both of us. This looked like a great deal. Let's, you know, especially that merger or that partnership with uh, Heartland Spirit. I figured this was an opportunity too good to pass. So that is why we are here today. And we can't thank them enough. Um, of course, I was thinking about doing a podcast anyway. But I mean, when they jumped on board. I mean, we had one going, but it's nothing like how it is now. Yeah. But hey, we're a team here. So, um, before we, anyway, now let's get into the nitty gritty, I guess, now that we've uh, spent a few minutes messing around. and Yeah, let's get to the seriousness. Yeah, yeah we're not Saturday Night Live. So, Jason, good, thank goodness um, we're recording this on... Uh, Friday night because now we don't have to worry about you either being happy or upset about the Bills and the Colts yesterday. So of course you'll, we'll see your reaction next Sunday or next yeah, Saturday. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to be a good one. Yeah. All right. So anyway, here we go. So we are going to talk about the head coaching vacancies. Of course, the Falcons, the Texans, the Jets, the Chargers. Um, who else was there? I'm trying to oh, think. Oh, man. Hold up, let me come up in the clutch here. Yeah. But there are teams with vacancies. Of course, Jim... Har While he's doing that, I'm just going to say Jim Harbaugh was one of the guys considered 
for the vacancies. Of course, he just signed a long-term extension at the University of Michigan, so he is no longer in consideration. Uh, Jason Garrett was interviewed by the Chargers on Friday. Um, Brian Dable is also in consideration for them, as well as Eric Bieniemy, who is the guy who is the top prospect right now for coaching. Arthur Smith is under consideration. Um, there are just so many names out there that are being tossed around at this very moment. I also have a pick that you guys will not believe that. Okay, I, I found it. it. All right. We got them. We'll we got the over. Broncos, the Chargers, the Jags, what, the, the Broncos, Jets, the Eagles, the and Broncos the Bears. Didn't, the Broncos didn't fire Nick Fangio. Oh, no. Head seats. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah. Shoot. So we're still searching. Apparently, we didn't do enough research before this. <laughs> it's all right. It's episode one. We're allowed to make mistakes. So, um, yeah. So, I guess... Oh, the Lions are definitely one of them. Oh, yeah. The Lions as well. Um, the Matt Patricia firing. Yes, which happened earlier in the year. Um, uh, Houston, too. Fish. Yeah, Houston, I believe I mentioned. But here's here's a big deal now. So, of course... It might have been announced already. We don't know what the Jacksonville Jaguars situation is. Urban Meyer, the college football analyst for Fox, is under heavy consideration. And it sounds like he has the job for the Jags. That's assuming that his wife and his family give him the blessing to go do so. So uh, I guess the big question now is, who do you think takes the uh, or do you how do you think he does if he takes the Jags job Urban Meyer I mean I look at it this way unfortunately a lot of his quarterbacks that went in the NFL haven't done a lot of that you know anything Dwayne Haskins being probably one of them but unfortunately if you but take somebody think... that has like a lot of his systems into the NFL maybe they can be successful but I don't think he's $12 million a year successful. If we're going to give anybody that money, and we talked about this as well, it is definitely the Bills' Sean McDermott. Yep. It's definitely uh, Sean Payton. I mean, we know Bill Belichick's got to be making a huge, substantial amount of money because he is the GM and the head coach for New England. Um, but this is money for someone who in my opinion, has accomplished a lot in the NFL. What kind of return on investment are you going to get if you're going to get a guy who, again, maybe has had the most success at the college ranks, but not had any experience at the professional ranks? I know you had a point. Yes, I was just going to say, you were saying about Bill Belichick, he actually currently is making $12 million a year. I so, just checked up his salary. So he would be make he is currently making what Urban Meyer wants to be making in the NFL. But a problem is and to do less. Bill Belichick earns it. And to do less. Keep in mind the head coaches in college, they do the scouting, they do the uh recruitment visits. In the in the pros, they the draft picks come to them. Yeah, they have free roam of who they want to choose. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry. There's so much. And the thing with the Jags, they have the number one pick. So you can go out there and be like, all right, let's look at all the top options for the number yeah. one pick. I hate to say it. If you are hand given Trevor Lawrence, you got to take it. And if yeah. you don't, you just look if like the biggest hypocrite Trevor ever. Lawrence. So, but here's the thing I, I think, again, Urban Meyer, you can talk about how Dwayne Haskins wasn't that good. You could talk about how these other quarterbacks didn't fare very well over there. But look at his overall success at the college ranks. I mean, he's won championships, which is something the Jags need. Um, but here's my problem with that, is the market he's going into. Doug Marone <laughs> was a very good coach. He's still, in my opinion, he still is a very good coach. But yes. Look, but here's the thing, and I've said this to multiple people: What person enters free agency? Say it's a Drew Brees. Say it's a Tom Brady. 
Um, what person sits here and says, that, that Jacksonville team, you know what, I'm going to go there. They seem like a really good market to go play for. No, no one, no one in their right Nobody. mind. Nobody. You literally have to hand yeah. them out money and be like, "I beg you, if you come here, we're gonna give you exactly. the top, one of the top See, quarterbacks. We're gonna give you a ton of money. Maybe like, let's let's offer you, you know, yeah, what they have, hundred million dollars in cash space to yeah. be used. And I'm sorry, but they don't. Or get... is that the Jets? I can't yeah. remember which one and it I'm was. Sorry. It was either the Jets or Jacks. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but they don't give a flying fuck what system you have in Jacksonville. They don't exactly. give a flying fuck. They don't. They do not want to play for a small market team who has a fan base of very little. And another thing that shocks me about Urban Meyer wanting to take on this deal is whenever this pandemic does come to an end you know Jacksonville's going to be playing at least one game a year out in London. And him for him, family is everything. Why would you go to a team where you know you're going to be spending a week and a half away from family by traveling halfway across the world? That and may be... play in a game where it's going to be, what, 9 in the morning, but to 10... But to London, it's going to be, what, 9 p.m. because of the time no, no, zone probably difference? probably, like, I don't even know, but it's definitely, like, 3 in the afternoon at the very least. I mean, for I them, know. yes, it's, you know, later in the afternoon. For yeah. us, who wants to wake up at 7 in the morning to have to watch a game? Yeah. I'm sorry, nothing against the London series. Yes, they're good. So was Mexico City. So was Toronto, which I'm glad that Buffalo is not partnered with Toronto <laughs> yeah. right now. But that's for um, a different discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as so. Urban Meyer goes, you know, if he does go to the Jags, just don't mess it up. Just don't fuck it up. I hate to say it. A lot of these coaches go to these teams and like, nope, it's got to be my way or the highway or get the fuck out of here. And I hate to say it. You know who oh, yeah. that reminds me? You know who one prime example of who it was my way or the highway was a former Philadelphia Eagles head coach. And look how far he went. Oh, Mr. Chip Kelly, right? Yeah, Chip Kelly. Yeah. He's like, nope, it's my Oregon system, or you get the hell out of here faster. And he was the one that wanted to get rid of <laughs> Sean McCoy, who was one of their best running backs at the time. Who Who's to say if yeah. Urban Meyer goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars, oh, we're going to get a little rid of Chenault. We're going to get rid of uh, Minshew Mania. We're going to go clean house, and we're going to bring in everybody that I want in here and if you don't like it i'm gonna bring in people that are gonna like my system gonna like the way that i coach or if you don't like the way i coach i'm sorry you're gone yeah and you know um so i had listed believe it or not when you were searching for all those vacancies i had them on my phone <laughs> nice so nice. very nice. Make I made you like making me look like an idiot on episode one, everybody. This you is know, my friend Ryan, I've known forever. He's making uh, uh, welcome. making me look like a fool since ever. <laughs> welcome to SCN Sports Talk, where I make Jason look like a complete clown. Welcome, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Oh, it's man. great to know. It, it takes a clown to know a clown. Oh, sorry. I do buddy. have red noses in the house. Well. Well, uh, maybe one day if we do a Halloween episode, I'll wear the red nose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. So on my list is everyone but the Vikings, of course, because I thought the Vikings would fire Mike Zimmer. Um, I thought that was a possibility. Um, so at the end of the day, what do you think is the most attractive job if you had to pick one? Who are the teams again? Jags, Jets, Texans, Falcons, Lions, and Chargers are the ones I got. I would probably have to end say I, I kind of like the Chargers op opportunity. You have a lot of growth with Justin Herbert. I mean, that man threw for 30 touchdown passes in his first season. Who's to say that, like, maybe some offensive-minded guy goes to the Chargers and say, you know what? Next year, instead of 30, you're going to throw for 40 or 50 touchdowns, and it's, you're going to increase your career. I'm sorry, but you have Mike Evans. You have Austin Eckler. You have... What do you mean? Um, we got Mike Williams, not Mike Evans. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, okay, Mike Williams. You have... Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. You have Hunter Henry. 
Austin, but, but the other thing is Hunter Henry's not under contract for next year. I'm sorry, but whoever they have coming in to take the head coaching vacancy, you better, better re-sign Hunter and Henry because he is probably, he's not the best tight end, but he is definitely one of the best, better pass-catching tight ends. The man that, I mean, he looks like a wide receiver running routes. I agree, and he doesn't drop passes. That's what makes him so... Here's the thing. I, I said all year, this is going to be, this has got to be the hardest decision uh, Tom Telesco has to make. Do I, you know, if neither of them want a contract extension, do I, do I franchise tag Mel, or Ingram or do I franchise tag Hunter Henry? And, and it's for such me, a, for me, it's probably got to be Hunter Henry because yeah, it's the young QB. Yeah. You know, but the the point the problem is these coaches that look into situations like yeah if I if I don't franchise tag Melvin Ingram can I also be able to have him healthy for me all year long and the only problem is Hunter Henry and Melvin Ingram has had injury problems for that team yeah now here's where I got to say um so I think the charge. I think the Jags are the most attractive to a GM and head coach pairing, mm -hmm. because if you're looking to build, they're the most attractive. If you're looking to go in and have immediate success with the pieces that are already there, the Chargers are easily the best option. Um, and I think you know. I think honestly, another destination that might work for a lot of head coaches might be the Atlanta Falcons. But I'm sorry, uh, that team hasn't been great since their Super Bowl run. Sorry, you're 28 to three guys. I hate. Sorry, Falcons fans, but you're not yeah. going to live that 25 point when I, uh, come back down. Yeah. When I did my episode of the uh, Canteen podcast with uh, Zach and Nathaniel. I did the episode where the, uh, or when we made our picks, it was the Chargers against the Falcons. And I said, the winner of that game, or the loser of that game, is the all-time chokers. And guess who lost that game? And hint, it wasn't my team. So, yep. they are the king it's, chokers. It was a team that is prone to choking all over the years. So, but... It sounds like they're going to make wholesale changes over there. Um, Julio Jones, I heard, is rumored to, to get traded out. I've heard Matt Ryan is rumored to get traded out. And the problem is, I just don't think they're an attractive destination if you're looking well, to rebuild. I look at it this way. The only problem is, is if you keep those guys, maybe you could kind of be in a, like a win-now situation. But yeah. the, the thing is, is that... Do you defense. think? Do you think that the head coach could, was the you know is, can be the guy that does it, or do you think that that team because they got rid of Kyle Shanahan? And I hate to say, it, I think Kyle Shanahan made that team just like Kyle you know, Shanahan. For all it's worth, you know he may not be the world's greatest head coach, but he is the best. And you can argue with me till you're blue in the face, everyone that's listening. But he is arguably the greatest offensive mind in the game active right now. It's Look tough to what... tell because I feel like him or Sean McVay might be the two best offensive minded guys. Yeah. But the problem is the Rams don't show it. The but... Falcons or the the Forty Niners. Yeah, <sighs> so uh they're gonna lose Robert Soleil. Or Sala, or whatever his, however you pronounce his last name, I think it's Sala. Sala, I think so. Sala. And I okay. think that him I don't and the Detroit Lions. I want to correct myself. I don't. It didn't happen. Yeah, I want to say I don't mean whatever. I just, I shouldn't even say that. That's very rude. But um, yeah, obviously he's the most attractive candidate right now, along with the enemy. Um, if I may, I mean, I just got to say. I think the Jets are going to get the the Jets are going to get the guy who you don't think is on the radar. Um, one guy I have listed is Mike Lafleur, who is the brother of the Packers Legend. coach. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I look at it this way: if Mike Lafleur is going to have any kind of successes, his Matt 
they might have a good chance in that AFC East. But if not, yeah, I mean, LaFleur, I hate to say it, I think I yeah. snubbed a few different um, times for head coach of the year, but that's for a different different discussion, different yeah, day. Also, uh, Pat Fitzgerald, I believe, was brought in for an interview with the Jets. Um, they wanted to interview Jason Day, who is coaching in the national championship on Monday. Jason Day has already stated, I'm not going anywhere. So, well, as you should. Yeah. Um, so, Pat Fitzgerald, I mean, if... I, I just don't see him having any success in the NFL. I just don't think he's that good of a coach. But, I, I mean, you, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. That's all I got to say. I, I, I don't think I can. Um, I got to wonder, though, and Zach and Nathaniel may uh, say something as well, but I wonder if the IU coach will ever get any consideration into the NFL because look at what he's done with that team this year. I mean, that team should have been in the uh, college football playoff discussion at the very least. Um, then another guy in consideration right now, of course, um, the Texans got a new GM. We don't know what role he's going to have in the hiring process, but mm -hmm. I believe Jimmy Johnson and Tony Dungy are a part of, they are the main part of the committee that is picking the Texans head coach and the Texans and the Chargers in a way they got the most to lose with their candidate well arguably they got the most to lose because they have the pieces there already I think so I mean minus a wide receiver if, for Houston <sighs> If they didn't get rid of the DeAndre Hopkins and, of course, you know, Deshaun Watson wanting out, it, it, it's tough for, you know, Houston to even get a very strong candidate. And who knows, you know, of course, Brian Dable is one of those options of candidacy. And, you know, do you think maybe if they somehow strongly, can, you know, think, okay, Deshaun, We'll give you one of these top, you know, offensive-minded guys to be your head coach. Do you think maybe that can sell Deshaun Watson enough to be like, you know what, I might be wrong for considering a trade. Mm -hmm. I might just stay another year, see how this is going to go, and then want out. Or do you, you know think what? they're not going to go after somebody that's going to be good for him and then he's going to want out anyway? That's an interesting point here. Um I just, I mean, if Deshaun Watson leaves, which I don't think he's going to. I mean, they, they talked about tr demanding a trade last offseason, if I recall. Um, I think, at the very least, Deshaun Watson owes it to the team to give him, to give that new head coach, unless it's someone absolutely shitty, he, he you know, like someone who's not even on the radar. Mm-hmm. I think he owes that coach a chance at success. And here's the thing. What if they do land Eric Bieniemy? You know, because I'm going to tell you right now, if they land Eric Bieniemy and they get a decent receiver in free agency, it's over. Houston I would, is going to be sorry. scary. I would stay. If, if I'm getting, like, somebody like him where the Chiefs, you know, I, I know you have your biases, yeah. Brian, because you're a Chargers fan with that. But... I look at it this way, you know, with him excelling Mahomes and the Chiefs, you know, forward, of course, you know, with the top targets and, you know, team that they have, I hate to say it, that would sell me enough. If I was a quarterback in the NFL and you're telling me you're going to give me one of the best offensive guys probably in the NFL right now, I would have to be yeah. sold on it. Yes, I would be a little pissed because you, you traded off one of my top targets that made me go into the divisional round and lose to the Kansas City Chiefs last year. Yeah. To now I don't we don't even make playoffs like you give me t like the bottom of the arc of receivers. Yeah, I throw for 4800 yards. That's great, but if I can't get to the playoffs, what's what's the point of even being here? Yeah, if you give if you give Deshaun Watson another De DeAndre Hopkins like player, of course he's going to stay. Then he can be able to, you know, be lights out Deshaun Watson, like he was maybe in college, 
And but even a few years there in Houston. Yeah, exactly. But I, 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 go ahead. I, I think he's going to be an attractive. Um, uh, I think that's going to be an attraction right there. Is um, you know Sean Watson and what he's capable of doing. I mean, look at what he did with Will Fuller being out the second half of the year. Um, look at what he did. You know, all season without a true number one receiver. I think, again, any offense, any coach that comes in, um, I've heard the two that are big on their list right now are Biennemi and uh, Tony Dungy is like in a bromance with uh, Jim Caldwell right now. And Jim Caldwell, for all it's worth, and, you know, Lions fans will have a very negative opinion on him, um, you know. Colts fans might not Caldwell. have a very fond opinion on him, but he is one hell of a coach, and you can say whatever you want I agree. about him. This is the guy who got screwed out of two organizations. Okay? He leads the Colts to a Super Bowl. He loses Peyton Manning for a year with a shoulder mm-hmm. in, or with a neck injury. Well, neck, neck and shoulder probably, but neck it was shoulder. more of his own neck. And he has a quarterback named Terry Collins. I think a Dan Orlovsky, too. Dan Orlovsky, who is now an analyst. He's nowhere in the league. And then you've got Curtis Painter. How mm-hmm. exactly is that on your coach when you have quarterbacks that were not prepared for that situation? He was wrongfully let go in that situation because Chuck Pagano didn't have half the coaching ability that Jim Caldwell had. And then Detroit, they just let go of him because they wanted to go all in on the Patriot way, not knowing that Matt Patricia had no effing clue how to coach a team. Right, exactly. You got that right. Well, the the thing is, is you know, Jim Caldwell was there during the Megatron and Stafford Stafford years, right? I believe so. The back half of the the uh, Megatron years. I'm sorry. That's when Stafford was good. Is when he had. Megatron, which, you know, is one of our, you know, finalists for Hall of Fame this year in his first year of eligibility. But I look at it this way. When he had Calvin, Calvin Johnson, Megatron, that's when his his career was at its top. Now, not so much. You know, the Lions, I hate to say it, the Lions might not be a destination. Maybe if they still had Megatron. It's going to be Robert it, Salah there. Let's be honest. The, and their defense even... is their defense is good. I mean, but when you get rid of Darius Slay, one of your top corners, I'm sorry, I don't think you're a destination for a defensive hmm. co- uh, coordinator becoming a head coach. The whole Detroit area wants Robert Salah, and I, I, I just don't know if he can coach. I, I think he's more of a hype man than he is a coach. Sometimes, I, I um, look at it this way: if he can be like a Deshaun. Or uh, Sean McDermott, who was a defensive-minded yeah. coach in Carolina and then became a head coach. If he can have that kind of success, maybe he can do well in Detroit. But I, I hate to say it, Detroit, there's a reason they've been bottom of the NFC North for years. Yeah. And when I mean years, I mean years. I'm sorry, Detroit yeah. fans. So Unless you guys can turn it around... You're going to be at the bottom yeah. of the NFC North for a while. I'll tell you, I wouldn't even mind seeing Arthur Smith go into Detroit because here's the thing. But my main concern about Arthur Smith is he's also a Chargers candidate right now. He's one of their top candidates. Does he have the big balls that Mike Vrabel has? You know, it, it, does he have the IQ to do that? Is the other question. Because Mike Vrabel is gutsy, but he's smart about it. He's not arrogant and aggressive. You know, think first, apologize later. Right. Or or act first, apologize later. This is... He, he's an aggressive coach, but he knows when it's okay to put the pedal to the floor. He knows how to put the pedal to the floor. Is that what Arthur Smith can bring to the table if this is what these teams are looking for? I mean, it depends on the team that he 
he might actually go for. The Jets, definitely hell no. Jags, probably not. If anything, probably Jags be are all in the on Houston. Urban. Probably the only chance I can think of is maybe the Chargers, maybe uh, maybe Houston that could put the me- pedal to the metal because of the you know the team that they have. And but fortunately, all those other teams that are looking for Kansas, like team or the head coach position, yeah. I don't know. I, I just don't think that he can do very successful unless you really have a team that's in a win-now situation. Yeah. And you're saying the Chargers candidate, he has, you know, whoever gets hired, this is probably the most stressful pick if you're in that organization. By the way, fuck you, Dean Spanos. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry, I was told to say that by our friend Zach, so uh, my apologies. But this one may be a bigger, like, higher stakes than when the team fired Schottenheimer after going 15-1. and This is where... You know, Eric Bienamini or Eric Bienemy, um, Arthur Smith. You know, they need someone who can come in not to rebuild this organization. They need someone to come in and change this culture. That's what this position is all about right now. That's completely right. different from the other positions that are available right now in the NFL. So I think, you know, which coach can come in and change the culture, I think it's definitely Biennemi and, um, you know, definitely Arthur Smith, maybe. Um, See, for me... Don't, don't, don't F it up and hire someone like Jason Garrett. No, don't. That's my plea. That's my plea. Dean Spanos... I'm sorry. He couldn't do anything for Dallas. So what makes you think that he can do anything for all those other teams? (laughs) All right. All right. I mean, yeah, Jason Gary has that clap, but nothing's worse than uh, Seattle's uh, Pete Carroll with the chewing the gum. Yeah. No. (laughs) Now before. You know, doing some squats, chewing your gum and clapping your hands like – Nothing gets better than that, but Pete you know, Car- when you have a team Pete like Carol the asshole. Got... Yeah, exactly. You oh, don't want boy. that asshole. Oh man. All right, before we switch gears cuz we do we don't want to go on forever on the coaching vacancies. Um here's one that I think many will not expect. Um and I've told many people and you can book it that I've said it. Um I've even said it on the canteen podcast which again go check it out on heartland spirit um but i have stated that i think bruce arian's time is coming to an end in tampa assuming that they do not go far in this playoffs and you know who my candidate is to replace him yep the josh mcdaniels the current offensive coordinator of the new patriots which w- would you, know, you not would you would you agree that if those two reunite, this could create some havoc. I'm sorry. If those two reunite, you might as well give Brady a seventh ring and then he rides into the sunset. I could see it. Um, I, I, I don't want to be fully sold on it yet because they have to bring back pieces. What are the chances I mean, as well that Julian Edelman could be in a trade for him? See, I was, just, I was just going to say that you bring in Julian Edelman, which I'm sure he's going to be wanting out of New England. You bring him in, yeah. I'm sorry, you, you got the old you crew might, back. You might have a 44-year-old MVP. If, of course, Josh I don't know McDaniels if I, I would go that far. I don't know if I would go that far. Look what he, what Tom Brady did in his last year of, you know, with New England. He, hmm. he kind of dropped off a little but look bit. Look at what but he did 40, this year. Let's argue that. Yeah. What look at what he did this year. It's not MVP numbers by any means, but you add another top receiver to that foray. Maybe you're talking MVP numbers. I'm sorry, but if you give any man Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, of course you're going to produce 40 touchdown pa- passes Anto- like it's nothing. And Antonio Clown. And Gronk. Well, Gronk's washed up. He definitely is not what. But Gronk he caught his to touchdown be. passes. He did when it was needed. He did, but he didn't look Gronk-esque in a way. To me, whenever I watched a New England game, Gronk was the safety net. Oh yeah, of course. 
I haven't seen safety net from him this year. And by the way, Byron Leftwich, their uh, offensive coordinator, is also a head coaching candidate. Um, Josh McDaniels did interview with the Chargers as well. I hope the Chargers don't take him because I just don't think he can do much to aid Herbert. I'm sorry, look at his situation in Denver. He couldn't do anything with Tim Tebow during his time. I think I think oh, actually no Kyle Kyle Orton, sorry. Kyle although, Orton or Jim Cutler or Jay Cutler or something like that. I can't remember who it was during the time. Yeah. Although but, Oh, sorry. But it was like one of those two. Go ahead. Yeah. Although I will say, why would Bill Belichick lure Josh McDaniels away from taking the Colts job if he doesn't know stuff? Because maybe he thinks, you know, hey, when I do, you know, end up retiring, you can take over for New England. But unfortunately, yeah. it's not going to happen. No. So anyway, I'm going to let you take over here because we're switching gears to the NBA. Um, and then we'll, of course, talk about college basketball just a little bit. Yes. You know, with the NBA, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have heard James Harden. Unfortunately, not very happy with the situation. They fired their head coach. Mike D'Antoni goes to Brooklyn, becomes the new assistant head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. Unfortunately, you know, the Nets were one of those destinations. Why would you? Okay, I had to ask this. If you know that your head coach just got fired, why would you go to the same team of the team that you had your like head the coach? System. I get it, but it's not going to be the same system. It's going to be Steve Nash's system, which is going to be probably totally different than Mike D'Antoni. I'll, but the problem with Mike, the, the thing with Mike D'Antoni, he coached Steve Nash in, in Phoenix, so maybe he might have some of those similarities. But unfortunately, the only other situation I think of is if I'm Harden, I would probably just stay in Houston. Wait till your contract rides out yep. and then test the free agency waters. That might be his best situation because, you know, Giannis just signed a massive extension with Milwaukee. He was one of those top targets in free agency for teams if he wasn't going to re- get re-signed. Dallas was one of them, hence why they didn't do anything in free agency this year, even though I'm pissed off about it. I've been saying it for years. Brian knows this. Rick Carlisle, I'm sorry your time has been done. You won the championship in 2011. But ever fucking since then, you've been doing absolutely nothing. You've been pissing everybody's careers away. No wonder why nobody wants to come to Dallas unless you trade for players. Hate to say it, but... uh, uh, what's, with, Harden... what's with Dallas teams and hanging on to coaches for way too long? Look at Jason Garrett. That man should have gotten fired year, like, five. I hate to say it, it's because of those big million-dollar maniacs. Entre- you know, of course, you have Mark Cuban where, you know, he said his comments, he said his comments. But well, Mark Cuban has more you... brains than Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones doesn't have anything. But the problem with both of those owners is they go to every team like you know, and this is why you don't let. If owners. you saw, if you saw Mark Cuban, you would think that he was the only person associated to Dallas. We have a GM, we have a CEO, but, and I, I'm, yeah. and I hate to say it, it's not like it's Jerry Jones' situation where he's the GM, he's a CEO, he's the owner. No matter what his decision, his team, he's going to choose, draft, and get the players he wants to. Unfortunately, with a situation with Dallas, yes. Mark Cuban ultimately owns the team, but it's our GM that makes the decisions when it comes to drafting Mm -hmm. players. And I think they've done a good job of putting the parts and pieces there, but I think they've held on to their coach a little too long. I I mean, look at, I mean, if we're going to argue who the best coach is right now, I'm going to be biased and say it's Spolstra. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, but I'm going to say, most... Mike D'Antoni should have never been given another opportunity, even with Houston. I don't know why anyone would want to play under him, because he's done little to nothing in his career of coaching. Why I is mean, he still he had... considered? I don't know. He's like and... he's like that termite that just won't go away. I agree. And that's why he's an assistant head coach right now, not a head coach. Yeah. 
and he'll get and, a head coaching gig next year. At least Doc Rivers can accomplish something. Yes. I, I was think just going to say Doc, that Doc, Doc Rivers. Rivers goes to 76ers and somehow, somehow, Brian, I feel like now you can c- credit 76ers as being one of those teams that they have also but, wanted to be, but now are going to become. But will they show up in the playoffs, number one, if we have a playoffs? Yeah, hopefully um, we course, can get to that situation. But Of course, the second half of the schedule is MIA right now. And the other thing is, can they be that playoff? Like I said, can they be that playoff team? Right now, the Pacers look good, too. Um, I mean, the Pacers the Heat, have always been a pretty decent team. The Heat, I mean, the yes, Heat are they were gonna in the come finals back. last year. They're going to come back. They're not going to go to the finals, maybe, but they're going to come back. They're going to be in the picture by the end of the year. I don't know. I hate to say it. The bubble, you know, made teams very, like, made teams find themselves again. And I hate to say it, if it was not the bubble, if it was the finals outside of the bubble, it would have been L.A. and Milwaukee. But since the bubble threw together teams that were, I think we didn't even think but, that there was going to be teams. But you can't say it was the bubble either. I mean, the way you look at it, that season ended in a way, and then it restarted. You had basically two months off, if not three months. That's like a whole new season right there. You also had players that had to opt out either for medical reasons or they just didn't mm-hmm. feel safe. So at the end of the day, this was like a whole new season. This was like a FIBA tournament in the way that it was run. In that, Very much. You know, players had the option to decide, I don't want to be here for this. Um, and you also got to imagine as well that had Kevin Durant come back for the Brooklyn Nets, maybe we'd be well, talking the Nets sure championship. The but the problem is, is I don't think Brooklyn was in even in one of those teams that made the bubble because they were already out beforehand. And I hate to say it, I'll, I also wanted to talk. Apparently, the bubble is not going to be the only situation where it's going to be playing in tournaments for 7th and 8th seed. I guess going forward, they're going to start doing play in tournaments for both conferences. You know, if you're the 7th seed and or the 8th seed, you can... F- like the ninth seed could basically battle in to be the new A seed is what we saw with Portland becoming the new A Too seed in drama. the West. Too much but the problem, drama. I agree, is going to be too much drama because you could basically do the bare minimum. Say you get within four games of the A seed, you win both of those games. I hate to say it, like you're basically giving them like a free ride into doing the bare minimum, getting into that ninth spot. And then now all of a sudden you're in the playoffs and you got to play the number one seed. I, I just that's that's just a load of crap. I'm sorry. That's no. You know, how many do. how many teams if, are going to basically get that spot? If there's any tournament that should be played across all major sports that do have these uh, professional player drafts, it should be the bottom four that play in a tournament for the number one pick. I agree. Not for the... And that should eliminate the tanking right there. Then we don't have to see these horrendous tank bowls every year, like uh, the Jets and the Jags. Mm -hmm. We don't have to see these horrible, you know, Cleveland Cavalier tank bowls, like for the last few years, because they're irrelevant without LeBron in the picture. Right. This is the kind of tournament they should be doing. Don't Again, you work all season to get to the seven or eight seed. Why should you have to be bumped for a guy who's not already in the picture? I I agree. Because it, it um, felt weird. Because like, but I will say, yeah, maybe if James Harden does somehow go to Brooklyn, that'll be one of our first big threes. It's over since if he goes there. Golden State. You think Had their... the East is going to get, at least Brooklyn's going to be the team to beat if that happens. But the problem is, is that will there be too much ego 
going on. There's three guys it's possible. that basically okay. want to be superstars on their own. But if you bring them all together, are they going to be able to, you know, look at the pull, sham that have... pull line with each other? Or are they going to be able to, like, butt heads? Look at the sham that happened in Golden State. For all those years or the uh super team i mean that was enough ego right there yes they won their championships but why is kd no longer with golden state if that was the case of oh well i i'm one of the best players lebron you know can't beat me can't guard me type of stuff yeah you won your championships but but guess who has what? more rings if you were relevant with winning championships how come your ass couldn't have stayed in okc and been like well if i'm great i'm just gonna stay with a team that i was drafted with and win a championship i mean yes lebron had to go away from cleveland to miami to win his first championship with Dwayne wade and chris bosh that's you know debate but cleveland was that... also uh dogging him for all those years they kept giving him they gave him a washed up shaquille o'neal they mm-hmm. gave him you know Look, they weren't giving him the help that he needed over there. Not that I'm defending what he did. What he did leaving Cleveland the first time was 100% wrong. Right. Um, but, again, when you're not giving someone the help that they need, and you can say, well, MJ didn't need help. MJ needed Scottie Pippen as much as Scottie Pippen needed MJ. Right. There's no dispute there. Imagine if Michael Jordan played with a bunch of has-beens instead of guys who were at a decent level that he could bring up to this elite level. So I know. Again, I agree. LeBron, LeBron and MJ have the capability to make players around them better. They both have that uncanny ability to do so, but when you have has-beens, there's, there's so little you can do. I know. I happen to agree. So, um, And another discussion we were going to talk about, you know, they released the first half of the season, but fortunately, will COVID strike again and make sure that the second half of the season doesn't happen? Like, are we going to even have playoffs? Are we even going to have an all-star break? Now, and are we going to be able to crown a 2021 NBA we've, champion? We've we've made it very clear when we started this, we are not going to dive into politics. And we're not going to commentate on what, you know, how we feel about what the Biden administration is going to do. But the Biden administration may have more say in what happens to the NBA and the NFL and the NHL. Well, actually, the NHL can go to Canada. I mean, I mean, they did they, they did for the bubble last year, which was actually pretty entertaining. My team, or, yeah, I got Sabre stuff. I can't even say my team. <laughs> but my I mean, boy, okay, your second team. <laughs> my second team that I have no gear. Well, I do have a Ryan Callahan jersey. And a fun story, um, Jason and I, of course, went to uh, the same high school where um, Ryan Callahan's mother was the teacher. Yes, she school. was a support teacher, I think. Yeah, she was a great teacher. Um, but um, anyway, that was just a little side story. But again, I think the Biden administration has more say in what happens to the to the seasons because there are there's looming rumors of a shutdown coming. Um, we know the first 100 days he's asking for masks. Um, mm-hmm. We're not going to say how we feel on that. We don't want you to say, oh, you liberal idiots on the sports talk podcast or you, you fools that are, you know, you Republican fools. We don't want that. We don't need any of that. I'm sorry. Let's take, let's take the politics out of this aside. But Um, we do have to say it just for the sake of informing that we don't know what's going to happen with this next administration. Anything can happen. I mean... Worst case that happens, they shut down the season again and they go into the bubble. It's worked before. I yeah. mean, Orlando, they have a partnership with Orlando. And Adam St- they could go back in there. Yeah, and I Adam mean, Silver should win an award for that. I agree. You know, Bronny. I look at it this way. <laughs> Just remember, everybody, NBA had, again, 
no positive tests. <laughs> and I will say it again. Yeah. <laughs> no positive Zeros. tests. <laughs> While they were in the bubble, they couldn't leave. They couldn't see their girlfriends. They couldn't see their wives yep. until towards the end. Yes, they did allow families and their children to be able to go to the game. Yes, they had to take and, COVID tests and quarantine. Yep. But and Jason LeBron couldn't Tatum, see Bronny. Jason Tatum, yes, we all know about that situation. You know, uh, he probably he probably came back home and got an ass whooping. You know how that yeah. all goes. All right, every spoiled rotten brat can probably get one. All right. Um, so, another thing I was gonna say, KP is supposed to be on his way back to the Dallas Mavericks now. Brian, I have to ask you. Yes, KP has had some serious injuries and some minor injuries. But do you think he could play the whole entire season, rest of the season, without at least getting some kind of injury? No. Limited limited practices, limited off-season programs, they're always going to lead to more injuries. And I just, again, I, I mean, once the season goes along, maybe there's less injuries. Honestly, the only thing I can think of is maybe... He, you know, if he gets injured, yes, it'll be a minor injury. Maybe like I hope so. I don't want to. He'll like he'll cramp up. He'll I don't know. And again, I don't roll I, his ankle or something yeah. like that, which I, is all minor injuries. I don't say no because I wish for I don't wish for him to get hurt. I hope he no, can. Nobody the does season. wish for anybody to get hurt at any given. But I hate to say it, except for Vontez Perfect. Yes. No, just kidding. We don't wish that on him either, no. even though he is a complete asshole. Yes. Um, right. For me, I'm just going to say one final thing. I say if he's going to you know, be able to be healthy, Dallas will be a very scary team because their defense has improved with Josh yeah. Richardson. But if he does not, if he honestly doesn't show improvement on staying healthy, I think Dallas has to do the right thing and eventually say you're gone, trade him, release him, do something with him because you signed him to that big five-year contract, but unfortunately you should have waited until you knew what you had in him. All right. Yeah, and All that's right. very true. So let's – we probably got to get moving here. So um, Cuse blew it Wednesday. Let's be honest. Syracuse blew it. I'm sorry. Um, if you're accused, how do you blow a twenty to six lead? They just. I mean, uh, did see, they take some notes from Atlanta Falcons? See, the problem is they either they just can't put forty minute games together right now. They they have two of the best guards arguably in the country right now, John or Gerard, and of course Buddy Buckets over there. Mm-hmm. Um. They just can't stay consistent through a whole game is what I've noticed in the games that I'm watching. The 2-3 zone the first game was atrocious. They can't press their way out of a paper bag. <laughs> um, a wet paper bag, dare I add. This team has the capabilities to be a ranked team in college basketball right now. If they could put a full 40 minutes together, they have the ability to be, I wouldn't say a top 10 team, but maybe arguably a top 20 team. They have a high ceiling, but they are not reaching that right now. They're just not playing like they should be a ranked team at all. No, and part of it can be attributed to COVID. It has hurt a lot of big teams this off season, um, you know, but... It affects everyone differently as well, based on state regulations. Um, I just as much as I went on a route for Qs, if you're just gonna blow big leads like that, I don't think you even deserve to be in the discussion for the the tournament they, at all. They need some big wins. Let's put it that way. They need some big wins. They need to win. They need to finish, of course, number one above 500 in mm-hmm. the ACC, if not win the ACC championship. If they can win that ACC tournament, they're in no matter what happens. Right. But this is a team, if they can get in and they can get their shit together, 
this is a team that can make a decent run. I mean, and they've shown in the past when they make a decent run, they can get very far. And yeah, and again, um, you know that two three zone when it's at its highest point, and you could also say Sadibe being injured contributes part of it because they don't have a true big man right now. Um, but when Sadibe's in there, it's a game changer. Um, but when that 2-3 zone works, there are so many few teams in the country that know how to play against it because it's not a normalcy. Unless you're a part of the Washington Huskies or the Syracuse Orange. See, you know, Brian and I, we've both played basketball. We know all about 2-3 zones. Yeah. When done effectively, it works great. When but, done ineffectively, you're going to be able to allow way too many points, and, and as shown it's by all about Q's... speed. Exactly. So, but the thing is, Syracuse's 2-3 zone is so much far, it's far more different than a 2-3 zone say that we've played, or I coach in a way. This 2-3 zone has the ability to expand into a 4-1. It has the ability to be kind of a man-to-man -man fundamental. This is how Syracuse runs it. And the question is, of course, um, you know, will they fix that? Can they put the full 40 minutes together? We know Jim Beheim doesn't like to run a full, um, you know, he doesn't like to go deep in the bench. He likes to go two players, three players in. And, you know, that could, that could help for, you know, a lot of people. A lot, you know, a lot of coaches are going to be wanting to go with a hot hand. And, you know, sometimes when you have a hot hand, like, as your starter, it's kind of hard to take him out of the game, put in the backup for, like, what, 10 or ten or so minutes while your big star gets to rest, and then put him back in. Because sometimes with that, Brian, yes, yeah. fatigue sets in. You know, if you have him out for too long, fatigue is going to definitely yeah. set in for anybody. But I hate to say it. And that's where the conditioning, getting kind of screwed out of that with COVID, definitely takes effect. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's even affected the start of the NBA season, as you can tell. Like a lot of players are just not playing the same way as they wanted to. Is it going to be the same thing with NCAA as well? But the thing is, is that you know you have a lot of time to pre prepare, but not nearly as much time to prepare as you usually would. Yes, and real quickly, let's also talk about the uh, NBA Hall of Fame finalists let me pull that up so of course right now it's jared allen who's most known for his work i believe on the vikings um ronde barber tony baselli Leroy barber or Leroy butler alan Faneka, tory holt calvin johnson megatron john lynch peyton manning little known guy clay matthews Sam Mills, Richard Seymour, Zach Thomas, Reggie Wayne, another guy I'm not very familiar with, <laughs> and Charles yes, Woodson. It, Who the heck be that guy? Yes, exactly. Uh, and everybody, <laughs> this is the Clay Matthews that is the father to Casey and Clay. I believe well, so. Well, Casey yeah. probably doesn't we believe so. Ca Casey probably doesn't play right play right now, but we do know that Clay. You know, of course, you know, they're related. Clay Matthews the third. I think Clay Matthews the second, third, something like that. It's, I want to say it's his father, somebody within family there. Yeah. And if I can just place one rant in here, and this is, again, I don't like to swear too much on these, but where the fuck is uh, Devin Hester? On this list. Yeah, that man was the best fucking kick returner as much as, you know... He had his they... contributions on offense, too. Give him that. I mean, yes, he was really good for Chicago, in, you know, in the slot. He was probably got to be at least one of those best slot receivers during the time. But that man, I tell you what, you better be fearful you kicked the ball as far out of bounds and out of his reach as possible... Because he is about one, you know, step away from 
going 99 yards all the way down to the other zone going for a touchdown. That man has had a hell of a career. And I feel like, Brian, if it's definitely, you know, he might have gotten snugged out of this year. He's going to get in definitely next year. Bet your sweet ass he will get in next year. Well, maybe the reason why he wasn't in is because he was eligible. Could be. Too. I don't but, know. But, you know, they, as soon as he is eligible to be a can, uh, finalist for it's, 2021, you know, 2022, 2023, or, or beyond, he better be first ballot. I'm sorry, there has been no other kick returner as good as Devin Hester such, is right now. Such disrespect for a GOAT. Such disrespect for a special teams GOAT. Um, so, if you had to pick, what are your four... I don't know how many they're going to induct, but what would be your top four? Top four? You want me to go one through four? It doesn't matter what order. Uh, just any four you think are going to get in. I I definitely got to say I, my top pick to get in in his first year of eligibility is definitely got to be Peyton Manning. The things that he's done with the Colts and Denver Broncos, taking them, taking he's probably got to be at least the first player that I know of as taking not just you know, one team, but two teams to the Super Bowl and win it. He, he's done everything. Yeah. I mean, he held the touchdown record before it got broken by Tom Brady and got broken by Drew Brees. They're basically like going back and forth right now for who is going to end up being the having the most touchdowns in NFL and mind history. You, and mind you, without heroes, assholes like Tom Brady would have like 13 Super Bowls. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Eli, and thank you. Uh, oh boy! Thank you, Peyton. Thank you, Eli. Thank you, Nick Foles. You know all those other guys. Um, you can also thank uh, probably Baltimore uh, guy there. No, oh, Joe Flacco. Uh, Joe Flacco. You know, right now he's currently in New York as the backup. I feel so terrible for him. He does. He deserves it. He was an elite. I get it, but Peyton Manning is definitely my top guy. Um, two is the receiver that he threw the ball to probably more than anybody, Reggie Wayne. Yes. That man was one of Payne Manning's greatest receivers in his time in Indianapolis. And I'm sure, you know, a certain Indianapolis Colts fan is probably going to agree with us on that. Yeah, Mr. Zach Carmian and uh, Nathaniel, or Mr. Nathaniel Thacker. I'm sorry, he's the... Indie fan here, but um, I'm sure I'm sure you know he's going to agree with me with one way or another when he I say that Peyton Manning and Reggie Wayne, the two best Colts players and probably Colts history, there the are definitely going to be hell yeah, both nothing beat beat that combo. Of course, you know now we know that there's some great combos right now, but you you just couldn't beat Peyton Manning and Reggie Wayne, and there and there was a reason why they won a Super Bowl against. The then one of the top rated defenses in NFL and the Chicago Bears, the 2006 yeah. Super Bowl there. Uh, for third, I, I would have to go with Charles Woodson. I mean, the things that he did in uh, Oakland and Green Bay, I hate to say it. If, if you want to say top art shutdown corner, I had to go, you know, nothing better than Charles Woodson during his time. You know, winning Super Bowl forty five with the Packers. Thank God they, you know, pit, you know they stopped Pittsburgh from winning seven championships there. Yeah. But I tell you what, Charles Wilson, nothing got better than him. And uh, yeah, you know, he went back to Oakland and finished his career out. But you know what, he 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 deserves it any more than anybody. And the top of my list, Brian. Okay. It, it pains it pains me to say this. Because, you know, he's in the same division as the Packers. But Jared fucking Allen. That dude was a beast. And he made Aaron Rodgers' day a living fucking nightmare in the NFC North. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I can agree with that. And I would like to see him get in first ballot, but I just don't know. That's the thing. Something tells me if, I, if they're going to only pick four... It's going to come down to John Lynch 
Alan Fanica, or uh, Tony Basali. One of those guys is going to get in. So I think I'm going to so. say I'm going to say that for at least one or two of my picks there of the top four. I think definitely Peyton Manning and Reggie Wayne. I think this would be huge. It would be huge if both of them got in the same year. I, I think, I'm pretty sure they would be the I first set of be, teammates, to my knowledge, that would, would get a, in the first year. It would be a year. fairy tale ending, easily. You know they they have to join. They have to share the stage at least Come one on. more time before they. You know what would be great is if there was no COVID and they can just throw pa- they could throw passes to each other on stage. But that I mean, won't happen. <laughs> what 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 could stop them? They can be six feet apart, throw like a little dinky six foot feet a uh, six foot touchdown or so. You know, come yeah. on now. But I'm pretty sure Reggie even... Wayne can still run routes. Re- Reggie, <laughs> Ray, uh, Jerry Rice can still run routes at his age, and he's fifty years old, Brian. Yeah, but I would say definitely Reggie Wayne, Pey- Peyton Manning is going to be unanimous, if not almost unanimous. Um. John Lynch, maybe. And then I'd love to see Charles Woodson. I think he can get in first ballot. We'll see. Um, Rondé Barber will get in eventually. Um, I don't even know why Calvin Johnson's on here. He he played so very little in his career. Yes, but he did look some at this amazing way. things. So did Barry Sanders, and look at He's also yeah. in the Hall of Fame, too. Yeah. But look at what he's done in his career to Megatron. Yes, Megatron was able to go out there and, you know, be a beast of receiver. Out. But the problem is, I just don't think he's done enough, and injuries alone has p- plagued him from get, actually ever getting into the Hall of Fame. And I hate to say it, Lions fans, I, I just think. don't think he's done enough to be in the Hall of Fame just yet. I don't think he's done enough to get in at the very least, the first three ballots, he hasn't deserved to get in. And what what is even more insulting to me is how did he get in over uh, Devin Hester? In that Devin Hester it. has accomplished much more. Now, Calvin Johnson, if he played a few more years in the league, stuck it out. Yes, he has the all-time receiving yards record in a season, but... Again, I mean, I think he should have stuck it out a couple more years. And but do you give a guy do. the Hall of Fame just off of one season? No, I mean, it's 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 like saying, do you give, you know, Elvin Kamara, you know, top rated um, running back just because he had six touchdowns in one game that or tied an NFL Henry. record? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, yes, they're great, but. So just because he had one good season doesn't make you a Hall of Famer. So we know we know Peyton Manning's gonna probably go on first ballot. We know Tom Brady is for sure gonna go down first oh, yeah, ballot. For sure. There's not even a denial. Eli's gonna go in, but it'll be on his namesake um why yeah, he gets course. first ballot. And yes, he's done some amazing things, but should he be first ballot is another question, and I think that's a very, very I, I think that's the finest line you can cross. Um, Drew Brees is going to be first ballot, but of Drew Brees, oh, yeah. Peyton Manning, Joe Montana, and Tom Brady, those four, who would you pick, you know, of those guys who are going to be first ballot or have been inducted into the Hall of Fame, who do you think would be your greatest? Oh, the greatest of all time? Oh. Yeah. I mean, of course, that's always got to be the, the debate. I hate to say it. Nothing gets better than Joe Montana. I mean, he had Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice still holds today the most receiving yards as a wide receiver, and I don't think I'll ever get broken in the history of the NFL, Brian. And that's the main reason why I call Joe Montana the GOAT, because of many of those championships, Joe Montana was the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, and there was a reason why they were so good in the 90s. Yes, and I agree. And the, I, 80s, the 80s and 90s. I agree. I think Peyton Manning would be my second. Um, just because he was Iron Man, too, before that neck injury. He was Iron Man. He, he never missed a game. I know. Um, and, you know, Tom Brady, he's always going to have scandals attached to his name when it comes to championships. 
you know, whether I mean, I mean, plus I he know, lost to he lost to Eli uh, twice. He lost to yes. Nick Foles. Yes. You yeah, know. I, I'm sorry. You can't be you can't be credited as the greatest of all time if you're going to go into that Super Bowl and lose to a glorified backup quarterback. Yeah, but I will admit, for how much I've insulted Tom Brady for being a system quarterback, he's proven this year that he was the system over there. And, and as he should. I mean, yeah. he has every right to be able to be and say, you know what? Yeah, so, Look, I told you guys I can be successful no matter where I go. Yeah, so I applaud him for proving me wrong all those years. I really do. Um, anyway, let's move forward here. Actually, before we do, let me also ask Joe Montana or Phillip Rivers, who's the best to not win a Super Bowl? Who was it? Phillip Rivers and who? Philip Rivers and Dan Marino. I'm sorry. I think I said Joe Montana. I yeah, mean, you did Dan say Marino. Joe Montana. I was about to say. Yeah, uh, Dan Marino, Phil, or yeah, Dan Marino, Philip Rivers. I would we're, probably we're have cross, to go with... We're crossing all the lines today. Yes, exactly. Um, I think my dad would be happy with this one. I would have to go with Dan Marino over Philip Rivers only because he had the records during the time when before he did retire, and of course, yes, they have been long broken over the years because, you know, you talk about us, uh, NFL back in the day where running was favored more than passing. Yes. You know, this is more of a passing league where you're going to see a lot of records getting broken. But I hate to say it, I, I would go with Dan the man. Yes, I'm going to go with the same. I, I love Phillip Rivers. I've always loved Phillip Rivers, but he just can't amount to what Dan Marino has done in his career. Yes, he can break his records, but... In a league that was a run-happy league compared to Phillip Rivers, who has had a North Turner pass-happy offense. He's had, you know, he has Frank Reich, who's, you know, again, another, I believe, another pass-happy offense, you know. Yes. He, All those years. I mean, I mean plus Phillip Rivers had LT to, lie, to exactly. rely on for a handful of those years. And right now, Philip Rivers has Jonathan Taylor, who yeah. ended up having a thousand rushing yards in his rookie season. I yeah. mean, not a lot of guys can say that. I applaud him on that. But I will tell you though, that combination Rivers and Gates will go down as one of the greatest in the oh, game. Oh yeah, of course. There's no denying that. But now let's shift gears. I didn't do a Twitter poll on this one, so we have to talk about the college football playoff and the national championship. Did you think that, well, I think we all knew uh, Alabama was going to get there, but did anybody anybody have Ohio State going there? No, I'm sorry. I I, I had Clemson and Alabama, which would have been the fourth time that they would have met with each other. And I hate to say it, you know, yes, Clemson's had Alabama's number, and I understand that Trevor Lawrence might be better than whoever Alabama has at the quarterback position. But... You look at it this way, you know, Ohio, Ohio State had a, a whole shit ton of things going, you know, bad their year, their way. But how? I mean, yeah, you had, what, Notre Dame. You had Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State. Of course, now it's Ohio State and Alabama. But if, I, if I'm going to go with anybody in this playoffs, you know, I'm shocked that Clemson didn't win. I'm just as shocked, honestly. And I'll tell you, you've heard my rant. I don't believe Ohio State deserved to get in um, based on... No, there's definitely you know, other credible teams that should have been there. IU being one of them, Florida, um, Texas A&M arguably should have been there. Um, I, 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 again, have said... If we're going to rule on the AP 20, top 25 as far as which four teams get in, are we going to do the same thing for college basketball? Because that's not how it should work. No, okay. and not at all. It should be on strength of schedule. And how, how much, and I agree with Dabo Sweeney, um, why he ranked Ohio State number 11, because there was such a small sample size. And, you know, they probably will win the national championship. We don't know. Um, but I mean, I'm sorry, but 
I think against Ohio State, but there's a reason why Nick Saban's glor- uh, you know, praise is a glorified god in college football. Yeah. But um yeah, so again, I think this year because it was all conference play, maybe we should have expanded it to eight teams this year. I mean, you know, same I mean, could look have been said for the NFL too, but yeah, but look at the NFL though completed all their games where college did not. And yes. it was interconference. It's not like the NFL, these teams played 16 games against their entire division. Right. That's the difference. Now, that's why I'm saying eight eight teams. You know, baseball, they played 60 games. It was such a small sample size. That's why they expanded their playoffs. Why wasn't the same done here? Because, because if you had you know, eight teams, maybe you could have gotten a more definitive champion. I mean, Alabama's proven enough, though. Well, Alabama's basically always going to prove themselves every year. I hate to say it. I mean, there's... But the thing is, is you give them, like, the easiest teams ever, and I hate to say it, there's a reason why there's, you minus know, the they're always top-ranked. Yeah, minus the uh, divisional games. Those are always uh toss-up. So what's, right. what's your prediction here for Alabama versus Ohio State Monday night? <sighs> Um, I'm sorry, I, I have to go with Al. I think they're going to get redemption for that loss against Clemson last year and finally be able to do it this year and win. I mean, Nick, Nick Saban doesn't take those losses in the national championship game lightly, and I think he's going to go out there and absolutely crush Ohio State. I can see it. I think I think Alabama's offense is way too strong right now. And they're just clicking on all cylinders. They have all year. They're an eight-point favorite right now, according to CBS Sports. They're, they're going to win this game. There's no question to that. I don't know by what margin. Maybe it's a score. Maybe it's two scores. Heck, maybe it's 70 to nothing. We don't know. But I think they're going to win. Uh, I will say this before we do head into our next topic. Yeah. If... I mean, with Trevor Lawrence losing in that college football playoff game, doesn't go very well for him heading into the NFL. I'm sorry. But you know what does bode well for him? The fact he didn't win a Heisman. That's very true. Because look at where Heisman winners are in the NFL. Minus Derrick Henry and Mark Ingram. Minus, I mean, Kyler Murray's doing well. And then, I mean, Baker. Baker. Baker's playing lights out. And we'll yes. talk about that. And he's... But, yeah, it's ridiculous. So let's make our NFL Sunday picks before we wrap things up as well. So the 105 game is the Ravens and the Titans. Um, the Ravens are three-and-a-half-point favorites, not by much. Um, and then they're 50-50 on our Twitter poll. For me... I mean, as much as I would love to see Baltimore take out Tennessee because they got as far as they did last year, I hate to say it, if you can't stop Derrick Henry, then I don't think anybody can. And I have to go, yes, yes, I know know, Baltimore has the three-and-a-half point slide, but I'm sorry, I had to go probably seven-and-a-half favor into Tennessee Titans. I think Derrick Henry is the real reason why the Tennessee Titans got as far as they did last year, and that's probably going to be the same reason why they get a little bit further. I wouldn't say they're going to get to the AFC Championship game. I mean, but who knows? It's the NFL. It's, you know, anything can happen. It could be, you know, the team that we're not even expecting getting into yeah. that position. But I, I happen to say I have to reverse it, and I have to go with Tennessee over Baltimore in its favor. I'm going to agree. i got to go Tennessee here. And everyone's been questioning, who can challenge the Chiefs in the AFC? I Everyone's saying it's the Bills, and I'm not going to disagree that the Bills can't... Ch- I'm not going to say the Bills can't challenge the Chiefs. I think they have a good shot at it. As much but as I would love to see... they do have a difficult road. Oh, yeah, of course. But I will say, Buffalo's 
road to not having to deal with the Chiefs right away looks a lot better than Tennessee's road to not having to deal with them right away. Because but, say Tennessee wins this game, they could face off against Kansas City next week. They could play the Bills or the Colts or God knows who. Uh, well, no, the Colts would play Kansas City no matter what if they went if they won yesterday. So yeah, um, but I think if anybody can beat the Kansas City Chiefs, it's the Bills and the Titans. I happen to agree with you, I Brian. Think, I think the Titans are severely underrated. I'm pretty sure this. both teams at I this mean, point want to have revenge. Can- Tennessee wants revenge for last year's, you know, plus, uh, loss. Plus Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill is a better quarterback than I think a lot of people give him credit for. I mean, if everybody watched that last game against the Houston Texans, you'll realize why we said Tannehill is a lot better than everybody expected. That pass alone to A.J. Brown, setting up that game-winning yeah. field goal, was the real reason why we say that Tannehill is a lot better than we think he is. Oh, yeah. And also, credit goes to Mike Vrabel for having a big set of balls. We got (laughs) the Bears, and we got who dat nation, the Saints. The Saints, no surprise, uh, 10-point favorites, and they won the Twitter poll unanimously. Hmm. It also depends on what kind of Chicago team we're going to get in the playoffs. If we're going to get the one from like earlier this year where they didn't, didn't know between Nick Foles or Mitchell Trubisky, they're going to get their ass. Are you going to kiss them titties, as uh, Thacker would like to say? Are you going to kiss them titties? Mitchell, tr- Mitchell kiss them titties? Hell yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, I had to go with uh, New Orleans, and I'm probably going to up 10 to at least 15. I think they're going to be at least 15-point heroes beating Chicago by, I want to say, I mean, maybe 25 to 10 or so. I could see it. Um, I'm going to say Saints as well. It's not going to be that close, especially with Alvin Kamara coming back. This just adds a whole new factor to the game. And plus you're going to have Michael Thomas back too. Michael Thomas. So they're not depleted anymore, but how is Michael Thomas going to come back from an ankle injury is going to be the big question. I mean, he's probably not going to be 100% because, you know, we all know about receivers – they definitely need that ankle strength to be able to run the routes. Yeah. Well, Slant Boy shouldn't have a problem with that. Exactly. <laughs> I mean... Uh, <sighs> all right. We got a rematch on our hands from last week. We got the Browns and Steelers on Sunday night football night in America. Sorry, I can't do the Al Roker thing. Steelers are negative, or Steelers are a six-point favorite, and they drew 50-50 on our Twitter poll. But do people not realize that it is not Kevin Stefanski coaching this Sunday? He is out with COVID. Does that have a bearing on your pick? Uh, I want to say no because you know you know what they say. If you face the same team two weeks in a row, you have a lot of footage of the same team that you're going to play in the playoffs. Yes, this time it's in Pittsburgh. And Big Ben. I don't think that's going to – and Big Ben. I look at it this way. Uh, Mason Rudolph was, what, a two-point conversion away from tying that game going into overtime. Who knows what would have happened. Could have been the same outcome. It could have been Cleveland winning or it could have been Pittsburgh winning. But I look at it this way. Mason Rudolph has shown enough that maybe he can be able to, you know, challenge. But I look at it this way. Steelers are definitely not the team that everybody thought they were. Oh, we're going to win the Super Bowl. We're going to get there. No, I'm, they I'm were sorry. Never that your, team. Team, your team is not going to go to the Super Bowl. Yes, they will make it out of round one. I think they have this edge over the Cleveland Browns. Yes, Cleveland won against Pittsburgh by two points. whoop de freaking do Two freaking points. You should consider yourselves lucky that you didn't have to worry about tying the game going into overtime in the first place. But this time, you're dealing with Big Ben and company. Yeah, the Pittsburgh Steelers might not have the same team as 
they did when they were first on that big old win streak of games. Their defense is depleted. Their offense is not the same as it once was. But I look at it this way. You know what they say. You can't beat the same team twice unless you tried. And I think Pittsburgh is going to be able to get revenge on Cleveland win this game and, you know, end their slot of games this Sunday with a decent size victory. And I want to say, Brian, I think this is going to come off of a game-winning field goal at the end of regulation. I think it's going to come off of a parky double doink again. Hey, uh-huh. whatever has to so. whatever has to get the job done is whatever the job is going to get done. If, if it means it's going to be a double doink and go in, go out. Who you mean? <laughs> yeah, but, but no. I think this time it's going to go you, in. You're picking the Browns, the then. No, I'm 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 picking the Steelers. Okay. I'm going to have to go with the Steelers, and they're going to get revenge this time. I think the Browns are. I think the Browns without Stefanski, I don't like their odds. If if they had Stefanski, I think they got a shot because I don't know what the special teams coach is able to do. I know he's one that has had turmoil in the past. That's all I know about him. I like the Steelers by more than that six point favorite without Stefanski because I feel like there's no real decision maker at this point in time. So that's my pick. Um, See, I would have went with more, but like I said, if this was like a Steelers team from maybe a few years ago, yeah, it definitely would be over six. But since it's not, I just think it's going to be off of a game-winning field goal at this point. I mean, that could be the case too. I mean, Miles Garrett and that defense, who knows? Um but anyway, we've come to the end here. Um, we want to thank you guys for watching our first episode. Um, we'll be back every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. We'll have some specials here and there. Um, like or dislike, be sure to subscribe to us on Anchor, Spotify. I believe Google Play is another option. Who knows what else we're on. But um, <laughs> Just find us on any kind of podcast. They'll be chances on are somewhere. we're anywhere on where podcasts Just- are. Just, just remember, just talk, you know, the wonderful internet is uh, very wonderful, and you can find us, you know, any way, yeah. shape, or form somehow on that. Uh, like, subscribe. Hopefully, you didn't hate us enough to <laughs> want us to get canceled off of one episode. Please. Hopefully, we didn't we make wanna... you want to bash your head against this wall over here. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, why is this Jason kid keep on ranting about? So, uh, oh boy, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully we can make it past back. episode one. Um, subscribe to our buddies over at Heartland Spirit. Their podcast, the Canteen Podcast, every Friday night. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully we'll get those guys on here soon. Um, we'll see what happens. Yes, it would be very cool to discuss. The come on over. Us. We got yeah, plenty of room here. <laughs> Join the dark side. <laughs> we got plenty of room here. All hey, right. man. We have two more. We have... A lot of space around. We have a lot of space. We have two more squares. We could fit a lot more than that. Let's let's take that as a challenge. <laughs> no. Yes, let's fit ten. No. <laughs> All right. We'll see. But anyway, thank you guys again, and we will see you here next Sunday. Uh, of course, but before I go, as well, um, any specials will be exclusive on YouTube. That's all I wanted to say. Anyway, until then, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>